Hello everybody and welcome to my 1 hour, 29 minute and 28 second speedrun of Doom Eternal. First things first, as you can see there, I'm playing on the easiest difficulty, all speedruns are running this. Another thing I want to say is this is any percent, meaning any glitches can and will be abused to their maximum potential to get the fastest speed possible. This is a very glitch heavy run. Uh, I did not find these glitches, there are people over in the Discord that found them. Um, if you want to have any more information about how to find these as a document uh, in the Discord, and I'll try and link the Discord in the description to this video. Uh, but yes, I just want to make sure you guys know this is a glitch-heavy run. We are beating the game in an hour and 29 minutes. My casual playthrough took me 18 hours. So right off the bat, we open up straight as normal. We kill these three zombies as fast as we can, try and get them one shot by going right up against their chest. And this tutorial level, for the most part, this first section is very normal. We just got to run through it as quick as we can without doing anything. We skip the uh, glory kill on that guy. It's a tutorial. We don't need to do that. Pick up the chainsaw, move around, and bash this ba box out of the way. Jump up. And then we grab Sticky Bomb for the upgrade for the shotgun. Sticky Bomb, rather than follow, because it uses less ammo and does a lot of damage. You can also get a few multi-kills. Definitely useful throughout the run, especially early on. Another thing I need to talk about while we go through this fight here, because it's going to be a very regular fight, one of the main tricks used in this run is called a slope boost. It is not a trick that I fully understand, but from what I know, basically, when you are on a slope of any kind, usually the edge of a ledge or just a very sloped surface, and you open up your weapon wheel to slow down time and repeatedly enter jump inputs. We all do this by using scroll wheel. We have bound jump to scroll wheel so we can get as many jump inputs as possible. It will actually take in those multiple inputs and output them all into the same jump, meaning you can get incredibly high jumps. Uh, and like I said, this is known as slope boosting. This will be the number one clip that is abused throughout the entirety of this game. We're about to see the first one here. I do have to say as well that this run is not perfect. I make plenty of mistakes. The record at the minute is like just above an hour. This is an hour and a half, so mine has a lot of mistakes. But there you go. The first ledge boost, sorry, slope boost right there. We jump all the way above the level on top of its sky barrier. Um, and we run across that towards the end. We will be skipping major sections of the vast majority of levels in this game. And there's going to be a lot and a lot of out of bounds. Um, navigating out of bounds is definitely tricky. And it takes a lot of practice and skill to know where you're going. It's, it's all about routing and trying to find the best optimizations. This run was recorded yesterday. And there has been plenty of new strats found since then. The game has only just been released about five, six days ago. So there's always people finding things. But the first thing we do here after jumping out of bounds is we drop back into bounds on top of the train yard um, and go over the top of this train and there's a grenade that we need to pick up in there but I switch to my chainsaw as I pick it up and it skips the animation for picking up. Next we're going to ledge boost off of the front of this train. This is quite a difficult one because you need to get an insane amount of height. As you can see I slowed on time, slightly go off the edge and then we land up on top of this building on a little platform that's above it. We drop down off of this building just to the left here and onto another invisible barrier and we walk up towards the building. I try to aim for the ur uh in the moss on moss records and we'll jump over this, drop down onto what seems to be a train tunnel and then we'll move across and we'll aim right towards that bit of concrete, walk towards it, then jump and it will hit a death plane which will respawn us directly above at the elevator we need to be at. Here I fail a really easy jump. I do want to leave in some of my mistakes we feel a really easy jump there so we do a wall climb jump in and now the rest of this mission is completely normal we can go over a few more of the different techniques we're going to be using throughout this run. As you can see, the sticky bomb launcher is quite prevalent in this. Um, one of the big things in Doom Eternal and just in the speedrun in general is ma uh, ammo management. We're going to have to use our chainsaw pretty regularly to keep on top of our ammo. For those of you that know the Doom series 2016 and Eternal, you know that you uh, get ammo for all of your guns by chainsawing an enemy, but your chainsaw does have limited ammo. We're going to be using that whenever we need it. But as you can see, I predict the spawn of this uh, big old spider guy and kill him pretty quickly and for this room we just have to take out all of the um advanced zombies the basic zombies we don't have to touch like the one that's in front of me now only the ones that are um that are the advanced ones that throw fireballs or shoot you all the normal ones can be completely left alone so we try and do that and um, we take them all out i miss the last one because i'm stupid and i get it there and then i try and ledge boost up onto this ledge here and I completely fail, so I end up just jumping up the wall here. As I said, I'm going to try and leave in my mistake for this. This is nowhere near a perfect run. Like I said, it's like a half an hour behind what the best time currently is. But we can skip those two enemies. They don't need to be killed. 
move out into this area. Again, killing enemies as quickly as possible. We need to make sure to manage our ammo here because we have a lot of enemies to kill. So, I chainsaw this enemy real quick. That gets us back up to full on shotgun or very near to. And that grenade we picked up earlier using the animation skip, we use that a little bit throughout as well just to get a little bit of extra damage off. We're going to be taking very, very few upgrades in this run. So, we're basically going to be playing with pretty much base shotgun, uh, apart from the sticky bomb launcher, base HP. Uh, base armor apart from our, our uh, ammo we'll be upgrading that throughout because we're going to be doing some stuff with um, one of the weapons called the ballista later on but as you can see the second segment of this level is incredibly normal we just got to kill the enemies regularly as fast as possible one of, i actually really like the first level of this game for the speed run because there's a, quite a lot of glitch heavy things but there's also quite a lot of normal combat and it's although it can be tedious for a runner that's repeating it over and over it is quite enjoyable because you get to do multiple different things so the portal spawns here and we are already stood where it spawns, so we instantly get portaled through without the animation having to play. Um, and we walk up towards this door here, and we do jump over this wall in order to skip a very, very short walk around. Normally, you have to walk around the outside to get over this wall, to get around into the center. But instead, we just jump right over the wall. We go over to the button, we press it, and that ends the mission. Skipping the cutscene holding enter to get through to the next area and we're into the fortress of doom which for those of you that don't know is the hub area of this game this is where you do all your mission selecting and you can get certain upgrades and things like that so the first thing we do when we enter the fortress of doom is we pick up um our flame belch i believe it is unfortunately i didn't skip the animation this one that was my bad you can, you can skip the animation there but unfortunately i didn't and we go and pick up our first upgrade in which we select ammo it does not matter on which segment you select it just make sure you select ammo we are going to need ammo more than health and armor as i said we are playing on easy so it's going to be rare that we die you may notice some fr uh, choppy frames there there's, there's going to be a few of those throughout i think it's just because i'm recording the game at a higher frame rate for um actual submitted runs this isn't going to be a submitted run because i had to do some cropping with this one but for actual submitted runs you have to run the game at a capped 250 frames per second as the slope boosting trick at higher frame rates can be abused even more and it's an unfair advantage for people with worse pcs so 250 is the limit um, and sometimes when we get higher in the frame rate it causes a few issues so onto Exultia, yeah, this is another tutorial-esque level, at least for the first half. I try and do a ledge boost to bounce all the way over, don't quite make it, so use the backup strat. And the assault rifle we missed in the first level spawns right on the floor there, so we can get that really easily. Something really weird happens here with my punch. I punch into the wall and it flies me into the wall. Um, and then here, we've got another little bit of combat here. So I know where the vast majority of the enemies spawn here, and there's not even that many of them, so I can quite easily get them. And one of the flying guys spawns above us. If you hit him immediately, he always dies automatically even if you don't finish him off i don't know why but he always seems to just drop out the sky you'll see his body behind us just on the floor even though we didn't kill him there you go look it just he just drops out the sky i don't know why we come into this door here and we skip this enemy completely we need to pick up the blood punch there is a way to skip this by going out of bounds but we need it for a later fight one of the bosses later on requires you to have it so we take the blood punch we drop down here and we make our way through the stairs and then here we actually pick up another upgrade our first rune which is the mobility in midair which you can imagine is a really big part of this run as we are going to be in midair a lot of the time with the slope boosting trick and also it adds an indicator to the bottom of your screen when you're in midair this really helps with some of the blind slope boosts in some outbound areas there's no textures and so this really gives you a good indicator of when you're in midair and when to start slope boosting so we make our way over onto these stairs here and we bounce all the way up over the wall. You can make the bounce immediately like I did there or you can do a backup strat and uh, bounce onto a little ledge behind you and then up to that ledge. And we make our way through a wall here and all the way around over to this ledge here and do another ledge boost. This one I mess up multiple times. As I said, this run is not perfect in the slightest. But once we once we manage to boost ourselves over this wall, we're heading all the way to where the dash is, which is in the building right in front of me here. You're on top of the sky barrier now, but you can drop in just over this statue here. And then the sloped walls can be used to easily boost yourself up towards these chains. Normally you have to climb up using a box, but here we can quite easily just run around and jump and destroy them by jumping up the walls very easily. There you go. Didn't quite make that one, but there you go. We got it. And now, instead of going outside and going through the cutscene like we're meant to, we go up to the box we were meant to use for that puzzle, and we use that to slope boost out of the top of the building. Lots of buildings in Doom do not have roofs, and that really helps for this. And this was actually a fail here uh, that I put in. I actually 
accidentally missed a jump. I didn't quite get the height on the slope boost I wanted. And so I ended up in the ground below where I wanted to be. I was trying to find a sloped ledge to bounce off of. But unfortunately, I couldn't find one due to how dark it was. And obviously, out of bounds being very, very difficult to navigate anyways. So I decided to just reload checkpoint because it's just going to be so much quicker than me trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Um, while we're watching this uh, bounce and going back over to the end of this level or, well the end of this half of this level should i say um i do just want to talk about this this run it does well this video should i say it does have cuts in it i've cut out many of the boring or very like many failed attempts that i have there are a few areas in the game where i attempt to um i attempt to do a level and i fail at it drastically um and have to take four five six seven attempts at it those i've cut out i have also found new strats myself and implement some new strats other people have used since this video uh, those strats i will be showing in the video especially the ones that i have found uh, they're mainly just optimizations on strategies that people had already created but i th i thought just in case people that are running this game or people that are watching might want to run this game it'd be better to have um a bit of reference here and here i don't recharge my dash and so fall <laughs> because again i'm stupid and that wastes a little bit more time so we could have easily done this level in like a minute less than i did but unfortunately uh yeah, I wasted quite a lot of time there. There's going to be a few of those. But this second half has to be one of my favourite parts of the level, of, of like any level in the run. We've got some regular combat here, so I'm just going to skip past this combat. We don't need to see all of this. We go to the end, and we end up going into this fleshy wall. All this purple goo sticks you to the floor, so we try and make our way over it. I do try and jump all the way to the ledge in front of us here, but I don't quite make it. So we have to, unfortunately, go through the pit of tentacles and make our way all the way around. Unfortunately, it is a little bit hard to make that jump, and it's not something I affected yet but it is something that i have done and practiced previously so i'm going to try and implement it into my next run and here we pick up the heat blast for our plasma rifle this isn't something that i use a lot during the run but i do like to have it as it is a little bit of extra damage and it falters enemies here with the battery we can actually skip the animation by swapping weapon as we pick it up but unfortunately i missed it on that one but the second battery we get later on we actually do end up doing it this here we skip the cutscene move over and instead of using the wall climb we just do a ledge boost all the way up it's, it's kind of hard to get you have to walk a bit further off the edge than you'd expect otherwise you hit an invisible wall but we move our way up here and we step on these little green terminals to open the door we drop down into the third one and boost ourselves all the way back up i kind of activate the weapon wheel a little bit too early here and waste a bit of time but i'd rather be safe than sorry so i jump up and then we've got to wait for these three doors to open. And this section, for anyone that's played the game, you'll know that it actually takes quite a long time. You've got to do a really big fight as soon as you get through this door and walk all the way around and get the Sentinel battery and walk down that Sentinel to the right um, big spear. But instead, we can actually just jump up, boost onto the Sentinel spear, go all the way to the end of the spear, and then jump over this rock right to where the sentinel battery is already and that skips a massive portion of the level and as you can see our weapon swapped there to skip the animation for picking up the sentinel battery that just helped save a little bit of time and instead of fighting all these enemies below and going through the whole rigmarole of um of trying to find out where we're going we can just skip past all of that and straight in and i know some of you may be saying oh well what's the point you're just glitching through the run this is any percent where glitches are allowed and this is trying to beat the game in the actual literal quickest possible time using any strategies available and any bugs or glitches so that's why there is such a heavy use on glitches in this there is certainly categories where the glitches aren't allowed or they're limited um, and they will be i don't know if i'll ever work in those i, I tend to prefer the glitch runs they're more fun for me but they'll also be pretty popular as well so we come over here and skip that section with a sentinel battery and a, yet again we skip another section with a sentinel battery here by jumping over and we actually die on purpose here but we don't die but we hit a death plane we hit a death plane and it respawns us in a different location thinking that we've already made it past and that skips another large portion of the level we use a ledge boost to boost all the way up here and all the way over to this area and then we reload checkpoint to make sure the enemies spawn if you don't reload the checkpoint there the enemies do not spawn so we spawn them in we move over and we pick up a power up. I forget the name. I think it's Onslaught. This purple one here, which boosts our damage by a massive margin for about 10 seconds. And we kill a few things while we've got that damage boost. And this is basically the end of this level. We just need to kill a few of these enemies and we're good to go. So there's three major big enemies in the spawn locations I showed there. 
running to those while you've got the onslaught available is definitely a good strategy because you can kill them a lot lot faster it seems to be like a three or four hundred percent damage increase with the onslaught i believe it's 400 so getting a few kills on the bigger enemies um is definitely the strategy there this gargoyle just eludes me in this bit just absolutely runs away from me and i cannot catch it we try to get this um big boy i i do apologize for not knowing the enemies of all the all the names i did play doom 2016 but i didn't play it religiously i'm mainly getting into the doom series with this game so i really should know a lot more of the enemies names but i don't um so we get the spider boy, take him out, and he is kind of the last big enemy that we have of this area. And then we have a few more smaller guys, as you can see here. I accidentally stop on, stomp on that guy's head. Completely unnecessary and didn't mean to, but whatever. And there you go, he's taken out. We've got like two or three more enemies. So I jump over to this platform here, ready for the portal to spawn. Uh, we look for the enemy. There he is, and we jump over, and if we try and hit this portal just as it spawns, we actually skip the animation, as you saw there, and that is the level ended for Exulta. There we go. And now we're back into the Fortress of Doom here. We've got a few things to do in the Fortress of Doom. This is kind of a mission of its own. We've got to pick up a few different things, and it's basically tutorializing how the Fortress of Doom works really isn't anything we can do to speed this process up apart from optimized movement and knowing where things are other than that we just kind of have to play the game the way it wants us to play it i don't even know if you can skip this animation i didn't personally um but we put the battery in and then i believe we have to go downstairs to the um executorium or whatever you want to call it killatorium it's basically a training area uh, oh here we go actually we, first of all we got to get the ice bomb i believe i managed to skip the animation for this one oh, i didn't Damn. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't skip the animation for that one either. But either way, we go down now and we've got to go to the practice arena. Unfortunately, this practice is mandatory. There's no way of skipping this yet. All of these all of these clips and all of these different skips I'm doing, things like that, um, they're all based on what is currently known and available now. There is obviously going to be new skips found in the coming days, weeks, and months that will probably speed this record up by a considerable amount, but for right now, this is what we know, and I just thought, considering I got a run that I really, I was pretty proud of, and um, I managed to do it only like six or seven days into the game's release, uh, I thought I'd release a video because I thought it'd just be entertaining for you guys. Uh, there's a, oh, there you go, Repertory, and that's what it's called. Uh, but there's a lot of other people that I watch, um, like Summoning Soul and um, and other people like um, Tomato Tomato Anus, if you've not if you watched him before, who basically cover speedruns of games and talk over them as I'm doing now. And I thought it'd be a cool idea to do one for. Uh, doom eternal at least for the early speed run i'm sure this game will develop massively and probably the current time will be cut down to about 40 minutes I i'm betting with a few optimizations on a few of the levels the game could easily be brought down to about 40 minutes um right now i think the, the fastest time with an uncapped frame rate is like 57 minutes and with a capped frame rate it's like one hour 16 because some of the tricks are a little easier on uncapped frame rate. But there you go, Repertorium's done a pretty quick fight, just like the tutorial level at the very start. Just kill some basic enemies, really not much to it. And here we pick up our first Predator token. Um, or Predator token, I can't remember what their name is. But either way, pick up our first token. Uh, that's going to be used for an upgrade later on. You use those to upgrade your suit. But we actually only have one token and we need two. There is a location later on where there's a token on the way. And that allows us to get fast swap. And I'll talk about when we get to that how the fast swap works. And uh, how we can use that to output a significant amount of damage. And I mean significant. There is a crazy, crazy strategy called alpha rotating for... Um, for really putting out an insane amount of damage. So we'll cover that once we get to the first Marauder. Which is one of the first big bosses of the game. Here we're on to Cultist Base. Cultist Base is a really fun level. Because it's just absolutely broken. Like from start to finish. We start off normally. Go down here. And we instantly jump off of this ledge. Onto this skull here. We use the horn of the skull or the skull itself to jump up onto a turret above us. We land on the turret. And then we use the turret to bounce onto the turret to the left. And then off of the turret to the left, we bounce onto another sky barrier um, that is just above us. And we make our way to the end of the sky barrier. And it's an invisible wall, so it's very hard to know when you're going to fall off it. But practice is, makes perfect for this. You just have to feel it out and find where it is. I tend to find that the little orange marker is kind of a good indication at the end of here for where the... Uh, 
where the barrier ends. So we fall off there, we do another ledge boost, and we make our way towards those double turrets to the right. Um, I kind of messed this up a little bit. I should have I should have retweaked how I landed here. I could have definitely landed in a better position. And we go over here rather than to the end of the level for one main reason, because we want to pick up the rocket launcher. The rocket launcher is going to be a big part of our damage output for later bosses and enemies. So we drop down here, we grab the rocket launcher, um, and then we boost straight back up to where we just came from. You might have noticed a very brief cut right there. I did fail this section. I cut that out for you guys uh, because it was quite a long fail. It wasted me a lot of time. You might have noticed the time I jumped up three or four minutes but anyways we make our way up to this turret here and we jump over here and then we're making our way to that island that i'm aiming at now it's difficult to make it all the way in one fell swoop um and as you can see i do hit a death barrier here but we can use these um boxes here to readjust and as you can see i gain a significant amount of height on that boost the boosts really do depend on your scrolling speed, your angle, the how far off of the ledge you were. There's lots and lots of different things coming into the uh, into the slope boosting. And then here we jump up onto this building here and I do fall into a stupid little gap here. So I just skip ahead to where I make my way out of the gap. And we go over towards this middle sort of reactor section and just follow your way around it. For the most part, while out of bounds, you can still see all of the walls here. So you just make your way around until you see an arch which is the door to the exit and we come over to this and we make our way over and drop down onto the train normally this level you'd have to get a bunch of key cards and unlock different areas and go through various combat trials with uh, the new weapons and we actually do skip out on uh, on one of the major weapons in this game in this level the super shotgun we don't even pick that up in this run at all which is a shame because it is a good weapon but there's no good route that would make it useful to get it's, it saves a lot more time to just skip it so we go over here and this is the train we need to be on to end the level so we walk ahead it triggers a death warp or I wouldn't, it's not even really a death warp it's just a warp onto the actual platform we press that button and that there ends the level and now we come into the fastest level in the entire game i'd say P probably the, the super gorness which is also really fast but this is the um the doom hunter base and in this level, we have a fight right at the start that is mandatory. We just have to go through it. But we do have the rocket launcher now, which makes this fight significantly easier, especially for the big enemy right in front of us here. This big boy goes down in like four rockets, I believe. Uh, there you go. And then we've got to take out the rest of them. The, the level won't progress until all of these enemies are dead. So you have to make sure to get all of them. They can be quite sneaky and hide in little corners, but we'd managed to get them all. As you can see, we've got a few frame rate drops there, but that's not going to be a big problem, hopefully, for the rest of this run. There's a few sections where we're going to have some frame drops but for the most part it's fine so we go over here we smash this little lock here um and we make our way into the actual level now that we're here we've got to just wait for this animation to play out and then once in the level this breaks wide open so someone else actually found the major skip for this um i believe let's see i might be able to get his name um Unfortunately not. I can put it in the description of the video though. Someone found this skip here, but I found a really optimized way of doing the skip. They found out how to actually like get do it and make it work, but I found out that if you do it in a slightly different way, if you go to the right rather than straight above after this jump here, you go off of these stairs to the right and do a do a slope boost. You can boost into the right hand corner of this wall, jump up, land on a platform, jump to a box right in front of you then jump over this sort of yellow vent area, straight towards that big massive beam, climb up a little out of bounds wall, drop into the beam, and that is the entire level skipped. Like that, that entire thing, we skipped a boss fight, we skipped loads and loads of climbing and jumping about, and we, we skipped onto the second phase of this boss fight where we have to fight two of the Doom Hunters. Now the Doom Hunters, we cannot skip, they, they have to be killed for the mission to end. Honestly, they're pretty easy, you destroy their shield um, with the energy weapon then you go for the rocket launcher and um, to finish them off and then you can also destroy their sled their little thing by doing a blood punch although i didn't have one available for this fight but yeah as i said we just go for rocket launcher we're making sure to chainsaw enemies to keep up on hp and mainly ammo for the rocket launcher that makes this significantly easier um, now, there is something to be said for taking the uh, the lock-on for the rocket launcher back earlier in this uh, level that I missed, but I didn't do that this run. It is something that people have been working with and tweaking with and changing as the runs progressed. That's probably something I'm going to try out in my next attempt at this. But there you go. We knock this guy off of his sled as well. He is fully off this sled now and there you go into the second phase i keep it in this monkey bar for some reason the monkey bars are really grippy in this game you just get anywhere near it and it's like oh you want it to swing okay you can swing then 
So we kind of have to chase him a little bit here, and uh, luckily you're invincible while chainsawing enemies, so you can actually use that to your advantage if you're really close to a boss. Just if you think you're going to get hit and there's an enemy nearby, just chainsaw them because you get some ammo out of it and it gives you a bit of iframes. And there you go, he's dead. Level ended. That level's meant to be about 40 minutes or longer, and we just completed it in about a minute and a half. So that's like probably one of the fastest levels, but this next one. Um, coming up called Super Gore Nest is probably just a bit quicker, but the the trick to actually doing it is way harder. That last level, Doom Hunter Base, I reckon anyone that has this game and plays it on PC can quite easily do that. It's a very, very easy uh, skip. Like, uh, I, I would say it takes takes very very little learning at all it's just the pathing and making sure you don't fall out of bounds because it is very easy to accidentally fall down a gap in the level and um and have to restart as you saw me do on exultia in the start there but this level is is by far the most broken one we get to skip the entire level again probably another 40 minute or so level where we have to go through multiple rooms and combat i don't think there's any bosses we skip but there's quite a major amount of platforming and enemy kills and key cards and all sorts of things like that that we skip in this fight uh, in this level the beginning starts off relatively simple we just go spawn in come through the train and jump up onto a ledge as you're about to see in a moment we've spawned in and this is going to be the first use of this weapon in my hand now, which is the Ballista. The Ballista is just like the Gorse Cannon from the previous game. It actually gives you a pretty significant boost if you fire it behind you, so you can use it to boost yourself along. We end up using that quite consistently. But there you go, I throw an Ice Bomb there. That's actually a strategy I found for making this really consistent. We jump onto the Monkey Bar um, and immediately, immediately chainsaw as soon as we jump onto the Monkey Bar at this enemy. I do fail this multiple times to start with here, so I'm going to show off a few of the fails but we set him up with chainsaw and unfortunately there you go i did fail that there this is a very very difficult uh glitch to pull off what we're trying to do is chainsaw the enemy off of the uh, monkey bar and that will actually push us underground it's very difficult to do but as i said the ice bomb setup although i didn't get it to work the first time i think this time i do it makes it for a really consistent way to keep the enemy in the right location we do here jump onto this we cut him and we fall under the map slowly we go over towards this little blue light, jump off of this, fall, we gorse boost, and we jump over towards the level. Unfortunately, this first time around, I fall into the level, and once you're in, you cannot get back out. Um, so that is an unfortunate error there, um, and we do have to restart again. I was trying to find maybe an area where we could boost back up through the ceiling. So as I said, we attempt this again, um, going back from the save point that's just where that ice bomb setup is. Unfortunately, I did get the ice bomb set up nicely there, but and the clip, but the ballista boost went a little wrong. Uh, we try it again, go for another one here. The clip is difficult, so I think I fail it again here. No, actually, I actually get it this time. So we, oh no, there you go, I did fail it. So sometimes it'll look like you get the clip, but you'll bounce back up out of bounds. We're not 100% sure why that happens, but it does seem to have something to do with double jumping before hitting the monkey bar. There you go, we set up the ice bomb clip again. Um, I'm really happy that I found that. That's like my, my favorite strategy that I've found so far. So we jump onto the monkey bar, we clip, and this pushes us under the map yet again. Um... Again, the clip under the under the map and to the end of the level was not found by me. But there you go. We boost there and we jump all the way onto this platform. We climb up this rock formation here that's partially invisible to start with. And we make our way over towards the flashing light over there. At the end, we will drop back into this and you can see there's a climbable wall there. So we jump over towards the climbable wall, grab it. And then we jump over to here. We take this green portal. We go to the right to pick up some armor to make sure we don't die to this enemy in front of us. Then we move to the right, hit the green portal, and that's the level over. If you manage to hit that clip on the first attempt with the gorse shot, um, or the blister shot, should I say, that level is around a minute long. It is down from about 40 minutes to a minute. And who, like... Whoever you were that found that out, absolutely amazing work on that. That was an insane skip. And this is what I mean by some crazy brokenness, considering how long this game's been out. So now we just go up and get ready for the next level. As you can see, I'm spamming E to try and activate the portal. But it's just letting me punch and punch and punch. It's just one of the silly things you can do during a run. I don't know. I, I just enjoy punching the button. <laughs> I could just wait normally, but nah, I gotta I gotta punch it as much as possible. And there you go, we activate the portal. And we head on to the next level, which is, again, one of my favorites because of how quick it is, but also how, like, 
intricate it is. There's only one major glitch, and it's a very easy one to pull off. Uh, but we've got a lot of combat to start with, which I actually enjoy a nice bit of combat during my run. Um, although it would be cool to have runs that are completely combat-free and have a completely just glitched run where you skip everything, it is also nice to have little bits of, of normal Doom combat. So we go in here, and we start to use the rocket launcher to clear out once we've dropped through this elevator, because it just clears out basic enemies so, so quickly. So we use that to our advantage and clear some of these guys out, as you can see. Takes out multiple groups very easily. We do not want to leave any enemies here because the doors will not open until these areas are cleared. This is some area... Well, th th this part of the game is an area that people are looking into now to try and skip. Because it is quite a long amount of combat. It's around two minutes of... Uh, maybe three minutes, maybe even a little longer of mandatory combat. And honestly, on a, on a run like this, that's quite a long time. Like I said, when, when it's getting to the point where runs are like sub one hour and sub 50 minutes even uh, later on, it's going to make, make all the difference if you can skip a few minutes of combat. Especially considering combat takes a lot more like resource management and accuracy. Some people aren't as good as that and so prefer to skip it. Uh, I'm actually pretty decent with my accuracy. I beat this game casually. I said I, uh, it was 18 hours but i beat this casually on ultra uh, violence which is the second to hardest difficulty excluding the permadeath mode um but yes yeah, so i i got pretty good at combat but as you can see i'm alpha rotating here which is basically switching to the rocket launcher then to the ballista and shooting one-on-one -on -one to to skip the cooldowns in the shots you can see there's a revenant just harassing my face he doesn't need to be killed to get through to the next section so just completely skip him and you can completely ignore him we have to kill two of the um two of the snake women here um whiplashes i believe they're called one drops there and then there's another one here they're actually pretty easy to kill one ballista shot mixed with one rocket and sometimes another ballista shot will kill them and here we pick up the heavy cannon or try to and drop down and this is going to be where we get our second token as i was talking about for the uh, armor upgrades so we're going to destroy these guys here. Again, pretty easy. We make sure to get some ammo as well and make sure the entire area is cleared. We drop down here. We don't need to kill this guy yet. But we drop down and there's another token right here. So we pick up the token and immediately, immediately we put our um, token into faster weapon swap and mode select. Meaning that we can alpha rotate between our two weapons, our gauss cannon uh, ballista, whatever you want to call it, and our rocket launcher very, very quickly. And this makes bigger enemies and certain bosses a lot, lot easier. Because as you can see, I'm killing enemies very, very quickly. Now, I do like, as I said before, this is the easiest difficulty, so enemies are easier to kill. But this is still insanely effective on any mode. Now, here I pick up some ammo for later. And not that I particularly need it, but. We make our way over here, and this is the, the major skip of this level. Instead of going around and activating both of the massive turrets at either side of these doors to destroy the tentacles, we can just jump right over this death barrier, um, this big locked door here, and go straight into the facility without having to disable the tentacles with the cannons. Because going to each cannon takes a long time, so instead we just go straight over and go through all the way to the elevator. Now, I am going to show an alternate strategy that I very recently found. It's a lot harder than the base way of doing this normally we just have to walk through the facility go from door to door and make our way through but instead um i found a strategy of going above and over the building and activating the elevator from behind it is definitely difficult and i've only managed to do it a few times but if i can get it more consistently it's going to be something we use a lot more often so here we go we've got the new trick found by me um, so we start off here as we would normally we jump up and instead of going straight forward We do a bounce off of this a slope boost We jump up onto this building and then we keep scrolling keep jumping and get a bounce and then dash into the elevator Through the wall and we activate it and we're back into the normal run. So this is the first big boss This is the um, the I forget his name now marauder. He is very very difficult normally Whenever his eyes flash green, we shoot him with a ballista, and then we shoot him with a rocket, then we shoot him with a ballista again. That is the alpha rotate, and that kills him very fast. If it is, if you do it accurately and hit him every time, it can be done in two cycles, but it normally takes me three. As you can see there, he is killed, and that is this level complete after going through the portal. That boss is normally very difficult. Ultra um, violence, that took me a very long time to beat was a rather difficult boss, um, and I didn't know about the alpha rotate there, so I could not do that 
anywhere near as quick. We have a few clips here, uh, just skipping the uh, Doom Fortress because nothing interesting happens over to the Mars base. And also, I'm going to skip this elevator ride here because we don't need to see the elevator ride, even though it is only about 10 seconds long. So we jump through at the uh, bottom of the elevator and we make the basic route as we normally would through this area, although we skip killing any of the enemies because there is no progression tied to killing these enemies. We can completely skip them, so there's absolutely no point. We get our rocket launcher and our ballista ready again for a next fight because we've got a new enemy coming up here i think these are called tyrants i can't remember their exact name but there's a big boy here we try and freeze him straight away to get a little bit of extra time dealing damage and we try and alpha rotate him as fast as possible this guy takes a few more alpha rotations but he's a lot slower and bigger and easier to hit and then we finish him off chop his head off and the last two enemies in here we have to kill and um, if you don't kill them it doesn't let you through the door i believe we get a bug on this door here where it doesn't open oh no we didn't we, we were fine we skip that upgrade there move straight through and here we go and do a rather difficult skip where instead of going straight forward up and over the bridge into the um, into the facility and going through the facility and doing all the activities in there, instead we just jump over a death barrier, jump onto this ledge, and then we boost up onto a little ledge above us here. And there's, there's platforms above us that you can see. They're actually still loaded in, but they're invisible. So we jump onto the invisible platforms, make our way over and drop into this door here. And this skips a vast majority of this. We make our way through through the end of this facility pretty normally actually uh, we just make our way up although we do use a few bounces to get up onto this ledge a little faster than you would otherwise we come round and we go to a ladder but this is yet another one where i found a new strategy that vastly improves the speed of this and consistency as well makes it a lot easier so here's the new trick i found uh, basically instead of do doing the invisible ledge thing you jump off of this do a low jump so you don't hit the ceiling the lister boost for speed and then shift jump towards this and then you can boost over because it doesn't open into this out of bounds area and instead of having to go through this first room here we can jump off of this cylinder thing onto the room that we passed through and we can activate the ladder from behind without having to run through all of that and that makes that a lot easier so we jump back into the normal footage here here I actually mess up a little bit. We finally get the BFG, the big fucking gun. Uh, we shoot all of these guys. I should have waited a little bit longer to do that because as you'll see, two enemies spawn in after the fact. If you wait a little bit longer with a BFG, this doesn't happen. That was a mistake on my behalf. Uh, so just be aware that if you're running this game, you've got to make sure to wait long enough for all of the enemies to spawn. Otherwise, you are going to waste a bit of time. And then we're through into the shot up Mars. I'm not going to be explaining a lot about the lore of this game because, I mean, people are already know the game if they played it themselves or if they want to play the game, they should definitely go and just play the story. But here we go through and make our way and I fail this jump because I'm stupid and bad. Um, and we just keep making our way. Jump at a jump. But yes, now we're, we're at the, um, shoot the, the Mars core, which is basically someone just... We use the BFG thing to shoot a hole in Mars. That, that's, that, that sums it up. We shot a hole in Mars. That's how it works. So we kill this guy here. He opens the door for us. And we're on to our first big combat area in a while. We have to pass through this combat. But luckily, we have the BFG now. And we have two shots loaded in. So we wait for the first wave of enemies to spawn. And we shoot a shot into the air there. If you shoot it there, it manages to kill a few extra enemies as they spawn in later on, as you can see. And then we've got to do a little bit more waiting around here to wait for all the new enemies. I normally wait for the enemy on the bridge in front of me to spawn, as you'll see in a moment. There you go. That enemy's just spawned and then as soon as he spawned shoot again and that should be the the end of this and then here the door opens but instead of dropping down the door and going through the normal way we're going to reload a checkpoint to disable an invisible wall to our right i don't know why it works but for some reason there's an invisible wall and if you do that it stops the invisible wall existing so instead of dropping down there and going through the facility normally we can just head to the right over here jump off of this ledge here do a slope boost and make sure not to go too high as to hit the roof but go over there and you just boost all the way onto this and activate the cannon this is one of the best moments in the entire game in my opinion but of course we skip it and then we go we get a little bit of ballista ammo just because we're going to need it for a pretty big ballista boost coming up here and um, we jump over here and we bounce up on top of this wall here pretty easy bounce there and jump over this bit's a little hard to get right you've got to drop down here and there's a, a, a sort of rock with a jagged edge that you see me go up to we bounce off of the jagged edge go up through the roof and we've got to try and land on a little light fixture so we jump up on top of this thing here uh, or try to at least i fail so many times at this um and we try to bounce off of this light fixture here um as you'll see right there 
that one. And then we look sort of behind us and diagonally, as you'll see where I'm looking now. We get our ballista at the ready. We bounce into the air and we shoot a few shots behind us and jump just after the second shot. Keep firing until you've done your fourth shot. You should land on an invisible platform, and this skips a lot of combat. There's a, a big tyrant fight below us now, uh, mixed with another fight just through the doors. So we get to skip all of that, and it also means we have to, we get to skip all of the platforming involved here. I do try and do a few ballista jumps here, but I do not have a free-scrolling mouse, meaning bunny hops are very difficult for me, or at least I just can't do them. Uh, but basically, what we're doing here is just following the terrain as it as it is formed, and then there's a bit of charred remains of this fortress just to our left here, as you seem about to look at. Just run towards the charred remains, um, and then just kind of drop where it lets you. There'll be a gap. Just move back a little bit and then move towards the fortress as you're dropping and you'll hit a death plane which will respawn your correct area. And here's where we pick up our second ammo pickup. We don't need this but it is better to grab it if you can. It doesn't actually use up that much time so I, I do think it's worth it. And we make our way through the door and this is pretty much the end of this level. All we've got to do now is make our way over and um, teleport to... One of the hell bases, you'll see what I mean in a moment, but we go into a drop pod. This little vent annoys me so much. Look at me trying to get down that vent. So annoying. But we make our way over to the drop pod here, get into the drop pod, and it takes us over to this area here. City of Tibet. And we make our way through this wall, and this is just a single fight, even, even if you do it legit, but we can actually skip this fight as well. I go over this way, and I get this 1-up just as a safety precaution. Having 1-ups is very, very nice, because it means you respawn exactly where you are. I do try to pick those up when possible, so we jump over that wall, and we're just making our way over to the, towards that sca Stargate-looking portal. Um, so I do a few bounces just to make this a little quicker and easier on myself. You don't have to do these bounces by any means, but it means you can get up onto the platform a little quicker. Um, and I'm pretty decent at the uh, at the slide bounces now, so I tend to use them quite a lot. I call them slide boosts, but I call them bounces quite a lot. Either way, we make our way out of that level, and we're going over to Sentinel Prime now. So this fight, uh, sorry, this um, this level is kind of a, like, it's not even that long of a level normally, but it does consist of a lot of uh, traversing and doing combat through these arenas. But we actually just go straight to the boss fight. We don't do anything else, but the boss fight is unskippable. Again, I'm actually glad for that because the boss fight's quite a fun one, although it is kind of difficult. But I think that always adds a little bit more interest to the run, at least for me. So we jump up on top of this roof here, and straight off this roof, we try and bounce over towards a big sort of hill. I don't know what to call it. It's like an outer bounds little spike in the dirt that's really low res. So I try to jump towards that. It's this one here. We bounce off of this, and there's a big tower just in front of us. We just got to land inside the tower. That's all you got to do, and it will death warp us right up to the correct point. Um... And then if you try and jump while on this platform, you can't, so I skip that. I jump on top of this thing, skip above rather than taking the elevator, just to skip the animation of riding the elevator. I again try and boost and fail miserably at ballista boosting. We make our way over towards this door, and we enter the boss fight. This guy is pretty difficult. You've got to hit him while his shield goes green. When it flashes green, just after that, if you can hit him with a ballista, he gets stunned, as he did there. And you can go up to him and melee him for a significant amount of damage. This is probably the longest fight in the game by the last boss um because it is two phases and he is very tanky even on the easiest difficulty there's quite a lot of ammo management you have to do and even health management to a certain extent because we kind of just take a lot of the hits that he gives on the nose but i always try to hit him with a ballista and then a rocket launcher and then a punch if i can especially if he gets stunned that for me is the best rotation, but I'm sure people have found how to do this fight a lot quicker than I have. This was just my personal attempt at this. I mean, this took me like three or four attempts on my first go of it um, on Ultra Violence, and this is on easy. I don't really know the difference between the difficulties, whether it's just more aggressive enemies or increased HP for enemies. I actually don't know 100%, but this fight still takes a considerable amount of time. But you got to remember that we don't have any upgrades too. When you have upgrades on your weapons, especially the rocket launcher, I can imagine this fight being a lot quicker. Um, although using up a lot more ammo. And, but, and we have more health and armor at this point as well. But there you go. We're very, very close now to through, through his first phase. Um, after his first phase, we destroy his shield and he comes at us with two of those maces he's holding and reflects bullets and all that sort of thing. He's, he's kind of a nuisance. But we're like two shots off getting him now. There you go. 
We'll play as a little animation here. I always love this animation here. The, sh the way the shield, like, yells in pain. It's, it's just, I don't know, I, I find it really cool. Um, so we jump up, stab that thing in the eye, get destroyed. And we take him out of that phase. But then he comes at us. He pulls another mace out of his bum. Comes at us. I love I love how this guy looks in his second phase, all like charred and burned. But whenever he's doing that, if you shoot him, he will reflect the attacks back back at you. This phase of him is a lot more susceptible to just normal hits. You can just fire at him and alpha rotate and do a pretty good amount of damage without really needing to worry. As you can see, I did a considerable chunk there. You don't really have to wait for specific moments. Uh, you can just keep firing. The only problem with this is it does create a significant ammo shortage, and he he does spawn very limited enemies. The first phase, I found at least spawns a lot more enemies so we go for a double chainsaw there to fully stock up on ammo especially on the ballista the ballista's our main damage dealer and of course it's easier to hit because it's uh the, the projectile just travels a lot lot faster but we just keep going on this guy and we just got to keep this up we just got to keep going make sure we're on top of him and not taking too much damage as you can see my health is getting a little low i do tend to chainsaw enemies for hp as well as um ammo you mainly get ammo for them but every enemy drops like 25 to 30 hp even the basic ones as you can see we're at 17 hp here i don't have any chainsaws left so i run around picking up armor in an absolute panic and wait for my chainsaw to come back the chainsaw is on a timer so right now i'm actually just just sitting by waiting for my chainsaw to be ready and of course it's ready just as soon as i kill him but now we've got a really easy kill on this guy because he's in a phase where we can easily hit him uh, and there you go we get the final kill on him again this animation is absolutely dope the um dismemberment and like destruction of enemy bodies with with shots even on normal enemies not just the bosses i really i really love the detail like i'm playing this game in this run on on low um on the uh lowest quality but when i played on on my normal did uh playthrough i played on nightmare quality which is like one above ultra and oh my god it looks so good i mean it even it looks crazy good now to be honest but there you go. We make our way through that level. That's probably a longer level just because that fight is very, very difficult to get through quickly. There's not really any specific tricks that anyone's found yet for getting through that fight quicker or skipping it. I'm sure in the coming days or weeks that people find the optimal strat for killing him or even just a way to skip it completely. Here's another big frame drop. I don't know why, but enemies have spawned in our base. Again, law reasons I'm not going to go through. Story reasons I'm not going to go through. We're mainly going through the speedrun itself, but we kill these guys out and we got to travel back through our ship over towards um, the power and re-enable and get um, Mr. Hayden plugged in. There you go. And we activate the next mission straight up and Tazanabad is the is the pronun pronunciation of this level. I can never remember. This level actually recently got, just before I made this video, just before I did this run, got pretty broken. Uh, it used to be kind of a difficult one with still a few good skips in it. One of the chainsaw clips we saw from earlier. But recently people found a much, much better way of doing this where you can just get on top of a roof and drop all the way to the bottom of the map. Uh, the first section of the uh, level is, again, pretty normal. We have to fight another one of the bosses we fought earlier and um, the marauder the guy with the shield we have to fight another one of those and again he's pretty easy to fight but there's no real way of skipping him we just have to make sure to be on our on our best form with our alpha rotations and you're gonna see a pretty funny mess up by me um i take these guys out with a chain gun which we haven't really been using yet but i try and blood punch that guy and completely fail we take him out i think we end up taking him out with the rocket launcher i can't remember what i use on him um oh no i just use the sticky bomb launcher okay but we kill this guy. He's a fairly easy kill. I could definitely have got through him quicker. But we do that and then we have to punch both of these triggers, these switches to open the door. And a marauder comes out the other side. And this guy I am ready for. But you'll see in a moment I really fail my alpha rotation because a bunch of other enemies spawn at the same time. And it's very hard to fight him while those other enemies are around. And I tend to just leave them because I'm stupid. I should really just kill them. But I tend to just leave them and try and fight the Marauder like while the enemies are attacking me. But I got really frustrated at them. And you'll you'll see what I did. I uh, I whip out the big boy. I whip out the BFG because I was getting on low health. And just launch it and kill everything. And I forget to switch my alpha rotation. And so I kill his wolf. I get the next alpha rotation going. So I wait until he uh, wait until he triggers the uh, the green little thing that he does, 
and I try to alpha rotate my rocket launcher, forget I don't have my rocket launcher out, and just fucking destroy the man with a BFG. It was a waste of ammo, but I found that really funny. There's actually a section coming up in just a minute where we've got to kill uh, a fire demon that spawns a bunch of other guys. Um, we have to kill that guy, and I, I tend to use the BFG on him instead. But I accidentally wasted the ammo there, but I just, I found it funny. It was still, <laughs> it was a mistake that made me laugh quite a lot. There wasn't really much uh, getting around that. So we go over here and we pick up a Brad suit that we're going to need for later. Um, and then we make our way up to the top of this. And as soon as we do, um, a big fiery guy spawns to the left of us here. And we have to alpha rotate him as quick as we can, because if you do not, he spawns a lot of enemies and they are empowered. While he is alive, the enemies he spawns are empowered, meaning they do more damage, they move quicker, they have more HP. You really, really don't want that to happen. So we keep making our way through and finish off the rest of these enemies. There's only a few... Um, and they're very, very easy to take out, to be honest. We don't even have to alpha rotate these guys. Um, we can actually chainsaw that guy to get a bit more ammo, just in case we need it for later on. Me not remembering we don't need it for later on. But anyways, we come up this tower, we push it over as you normally would. Um, we activate this to open up the little bit in front of us that's full of water. And using that rad suit, we swim under the irradiated water and empty this sort of basin, whatever you want to call it, this lake. Um, I accidentally dash just a little bit wrong there and waste a bit of time. But either way, we make our way up and shoot a panel that opens a gate for us, as you'll see in just a moment. And we swim through, and this next section is where the big skip was found recently. Again, the people that found these skips will be in the document that I'll link below. Um, all of the major skips were found by various brilliant 2016 runners, or just various glitch hunters extraordinaire. Um, but we move over here, and instead of going back through the door like we normally would, and going through the level as intended, we jump up here, we get stuck in a corner, which you think is like, oh, nothing's going to happen here, but it turns out it's it's just like a very sort of weird slope that leads into an out of bounds. I don't know if it's a paper clip, which is where you rub against a paper thin wall, or if it's just a normal clip. But either way, we push our way through here. We make our way over. You'll see a brief cut here because I cut out a fail that I do. There you go. Um, and we just jump over towards that river. We look towards the river, then we look for the blue. We drop to the left of the blue and then straight into the blue. And we will spawn right at the end of this level. We go up and we get our big old sword. We activate it. We get our sword made. And we go to the tutorial level for the sword. All we've got to do here is slice and dice each of the bigger enemies with our sword. Little enemies can be left alone. But we just try and <clears throat> make our way through. Pick up those little red things you can see around which give us a sword charge. And take out all the bigger enemies. Again, this is uh, a section where the level end doesn't spawn until all these enemies are dead. So you have to do this. There's no way of skipping it or getting around it. Um, there's a few enemies that spawn. Basically one of every type, including the big fire demon guy we killed earlier. So you've got to find him. As you can see, he's just over there. And kill him quickly. But luckily, this sword does indeed one-shot him. We just slice him in half. And there's another big boy here. We slice in half. And we got two more enemies, I think. Two more big boys. Uh, but we take out this group of enemies here because, for some reason, the portal wouldn't spawn. Normally it does, but there it didn't. And you see the portal spawns in front of us. We can walk straight into it with no care in the world. And we are through that level. And now we're on to something serious. This next level is... Well, this next section, Necrovolt 1 and 2... By far the hardest part of this entire speedrun. It took me a very long time to learn this skip, and it took me many attempts to get it correct. So you'll you'll see just after I punch the shit out of this ball um, that we get onto Necrovol, and there is a skip that's just impossible. It's like I've gotten a lot better at it, but it takes a lot of very very RNG based setup, and yeah, it's it's very difficult to set up correctly. So basically, as you saw in um, Super Gore Nest where we did a chainsaw clip using a monkey bar we're going to be doing that again but at the same time you've got to deal with a giant tyrant that's got like a missile launcher and is shooting at us constantly the enemy's position has to be on a very very specific patch of dirt otherwise the clip doesn't work and even after that we have to do a quad ballista launch after doing a giant giant slope boost to make our way to the second half of the level and oh my god it's so difficult to get the slope boost right, and then the ballista jumps right, and it's difficult to get the clip. It took me about four attempts, I think, in this run. I have gotten it in other runs, 
that were overall slow at times on my first attempt, and I'm looking to get more consistent at it, but the, the problem being is it's just, I can get the second half more consistent now, and I'll even show an alternate strategy for how to do the second half a little better than I did in this run, uh, but the, the clip is just so RNG based, it's so difficult to set up and get right, um, and I don't know how anyone found this, but thank god they did, because it saves so much time, although it's a very annoying clip. So we go over here, we spawn the big demon guy, and then we run all the way into this corner and just chill like literally just completely chill and do nothing basically right now we're waiting for a few demons to spawn we have to make sure that a mecha demon is in the right area which is that demon there the one that is um the mecha zombie that's shooting us with his little chain gun sort of thing and the big boy we just have to manage that's all you can do you just have to manage him so what we're trying to do with these guys is we're trying to bring them around to a patch of dirt that's just in front of me now next to this monkey bar so we've got to try and pull this tyrant as far away as we can from the monkey bar without pulling the enemies too far away. So as you can see, the, uh, I'm trying to drag this guy towards the patch of dare. I don't know if you can tell the one I recognize. The one he's on now. And then we turn around, we freeze him in place once he's turned around, and we try and clip. But unfortunately, he was a little bit too far away, and so the clip didn't work. I, I activated the chainsaw a little bit too late after the monkey bar. You've got to kind of activate it as soon as you're on the monkey bar. And unfortunately, as you can saw, as you saw there, I failed. I, I failed quite a few more attempts after this, but I do believe I've cut them out uh, so that you guys can just see what it's meant to look like. But the thing is, when you fail, you have to do this whole setup every time. So we've got to wait for the zombies to spawn. Make sure a mecha zombie's in the right place. Make sure the tyrant isn't too close to where the mecha zombie is or near the monkey bar. Because if he punches you or steps on you or shoots you while you're doing the clip, it can push you out of it and make sure and like make it so that you don't go out of bounds. But anyways, this guy's in the right place now. So we freeze him. We try and cut him. And yet again, we fail. We fail indeed again. So I'm just trying to get get a good example of how hard this really is. I was going to cut all of these out, um, but yeah, I left a few of them in. I believe it's this attempt that I get it right, because even if the zombie feels like it's in the exact right spot, if you activate that chainsaw a second too late or a second too early, you shout out a look and you're going to have to start again. And every single reset is a good 30 seconds to a minute down the drain. And in a speed run that's going to end up at least being so tight, that's a major time loss. So getting this on the first attempt would be really nice. Like I said, though, it is RNG based. As you can see, I'm killing some of the basic zombies because I don't want them to get in the way. I only want the mecha zombies to be in the right uh, position. I don't want to bother with the normal zombies at all. At the minute, I've got the zombies in the right position. I'm just trying to wait for the tyrant to get the fuck out the way he is such an obnoxious piece of work he will constantly just bother you all the time but we about get him into a decent spot here and as you can see it's so much faffing around and making sure he's, he's not in the spot you wanted to be, you don't want to be in and now now that he's sort of centered we move the zombie into the right spot this takes so long to get set up correctly that it's just people were debating whether it was worth it but it just it saves too much time even if even if you fail it a few times. So now the zombies are in the right spot. We freeze them into place. I try and um, just kill those guys. Just get them out of the way. I almost kill the mecha zombies. That would have been a real cry moment. But I just wait for them to get a little bit closer. And there you go. They're both in the right spot. Which makes it even easier. We get that guy. And we drop through the floor. We jump over here towards a sort of brick sort of cage thing. We drop off of the brick cage. We try and jump up. We don't quite make it. If we drop a little further back, I seem to have a lot more higher chance of getting this. So we drop further back, jump up, and miss it again because I didn't drop further back. But there you go. Well, let's, I think this is the one where I do it. So we drop off the first ledge, then we drop off the second ledge, and this is much more consistent. We fling up into the air. We land on this ledge here. Uh, we push through the wall, go all the way towards this rock here, and we just jump ourselves off of this over towards a staircase. Did I fail that again? I did. My bad. I don't know. I, I I was meant to cut all these out. I do apologize. I'm doing the commentary afterwards. Um, but anyways, we fling ourselves up here. Yet again. Oh my god, I failed this so many times. I failed this so many times. Uh, but we fling ourselves up. It's a, it's a good example of this working, I suppose. I try and be a lot more cautious this time. And make sure we get the fling right. This time we do. And we, we want to be pushing ourselves through this little rock here. And then flinging yourself off this towards the staircase in the back. You can see it just there. 
and we drop onto this staircase and we'll go out of bounds here again and there'll be a very hard to see sort of black wall. We want to be using that black wall to bounce up into the air using a slope boost and then ballista boosting behind us by aiming at the tower in the distance. And we need to do that four times. But if you do not get enough height, it doesn't work. So here, I cut out my various attempts at doing this because it took me like eight attempts to get the right height. But eventually, I get the right height. And we shoot against the tower four times with a jump on the second boost. And we land over on a platform. If you've done it right, you should see this glowing aura. And then here, I mess up miraculous miraculously, but I managed to make it work. This is one of my major time losses. So I boost up as you should right here. As you can see, we're deep into Out of Bounds, above the second half of this level. Um, and we land on this platform here. We go off of this platform onto this ledge over here. Uh, and then we use this ledge to try and bounce over to the end zone. But I, you can't see anything. So the only thing we have to rely on is the indicator for when you're in midair from the thing we got earlier, the rune. But unfortunately, I fell off. And this is where the creativeness of this, of this section comes in. Because I have to find a way to get back up without falling out of bounds again. Otherwise, I'm going to have to restart the entire process. And that takes a very long time. So I'm trying to find any ledge I can to jump off of, and I find one right here. So we can use this to just fall off of right here and bounce our way up, back up as high as we can. Unfortunately, we don't actually get that high. We end up landing on a box that's just about as low as we were before. And yeah, I just have to do some creative footwork to make sure I actually get there. We go towards this glowing light, land in this. Yet again, I realize I haven't gone far enough. Uh, but after, do not worry because after this I do show off a, a method of doing this which is much more consistent and is, is actually without all these fails. But at the same time I didn't want to cut out all of these fails because for one I did want to make it known this isn't a perfect run. And for two I think people need to see the mistakes that can be made. I'm sure there's plenty of you out there that have the game that might want to attempt this. I don't know about how many of you would but you might want to attempt this. Um... So I wanted to keep a few of the fails in there so you guys could see some of the mistakes to try not to make. As I said, some of these strategies might change drastically and not even exist in the future. But there you go. So here is onto the second attempt. This is the much better one. As you can see, I've got the cheats on for infinite ammo and stuff, so I don't have to worry about ammo for my uh, for my ballista boosts. We go back onto the wall, exactly the same as last time, boost up onto this platform here. But this time around, we actually find the ledge correctly. As you can see here, I just cut ahead to when we find the ledge. We boost up into the sky as high as we can until we see the icons in that flame, and we do a few ballista jumps with a jump on the second boost and we land on the platform we should have originally been on and as you can see i do a few more ballista boosts to try and get back over to the section we're meant to be at i got a little far but i boost back in we drop onto this section here we go back through this tunnel and that is the level over the level would normally take like an hour and we cut it down to if that is done correctly a few minutes very difficult to do that correctly but now we're on to Necrovol Part 2. This one is not as difficult, but does have some difficulties with it. This first section is actually really normal. I do use a few ledge boosts that I shouldn't have that kind of make it take a little longer just because I wanted to jump around the place. Jump, jump, jump up and get down sort of thing. But um, we jump over to these ledges and basically some of the flying guys are going to spawn. You have to kill them to progress here. You cannot get away with not killing these guys. So you've got to make sure you've got enough ammo and put as many shots as you can into all these flying dudes. Um, they're actually pretty easy to kill with your ballista because ballista does extra damage to flying enemies So I, I tend to, to exclusively use that but I will switch to my rocket launcher if they are grouped up as you can see but We take out some of these boys um, And take out this guy and then we've got to go to the next ledge which will spawn I can't believe how many, guy, how many hits this guy took by the way We go to the next ledge which will spawn one more of the flying guys um, And we take him out and then the door will open for us as you can see there he is I think he takes three shots doesn't he or just two just two so we jump over here and we've got a small fight to do here which we actually realized recently that you do not have to do you can actually skip this fight oh no no sorry this isn't the fight you can skip my apologies you have to do this one you have to open the, the gate but anyways this is just a small fight it's got a few pretty basic enemies and one bigger enemy um and i do use my uh my sword to take out a few of those quite easily but we get a few of them done pretty damn quickly and then when the door opens is where another probably one of the most broken parts of the run happens. Because in Necrovol Part 2, normally you have to um, 
You have to climb your way up this tower slowly but surely to make it to an elevator at the top. But what we do here is we make our way over, we jump up this ledge here, and we slowly but surely bounce our way up the tower. Inch by inch, bit by bit, out of bounds section by out of bounds section until we reach the top of the tower. Um, this is a very, very difficult to navigate section because there's so many areas where if you hit them at the wrong angle, you'll get death warped into the wrong section. You have to start all over again. Or if you hit them at the wrong section, you'll have to start again because you missed the thing you should have landed on. There are plenty of different areas in this that you can make some major errors on. But I make my way over to this thing here. I jump up on top of this box here. And I spent way too long trying to get a bounce off of this, so I just skipped through all of those bounces. I actually finally get a decent bounce and land on another platform um, in a moment here. I think it's just... Is it this bounce? Yeah, I think it's this bounce. And I land on a platform here, just this one here. And this platform is actually the one that you want to be landing on in the, uh, in the better skip of this to land over on this button. And then you go to the left and jump into that death warp and it will warp you all the way up to the elevator here. And now we go into another section where we have to fight a bunch of enemies and that ends the level. So the, the fighting section of this is not too bad at all. Again, we can alpha rotate for the vast majority. The first enemy, you should still have a sword charge. So whip out your sword and take him out because he is a big enemy that takes a lot of ammo. Okay, so here, unfortunately, it is quite framey, but we basically just have to kill a bunch of enemies. I cut out a lot of the combat all the way to this final boss here because it is just killing enemies, alpha rotating, as we've seen before. Then we activate this button here, and we've got to destroy two big chained locks for these big tyrant guys that are locked up above us and keeping this thing held in place. So we destroy both of those. Again, I apologize massively for the really, really choppy frames. I know it's not great. And we do even fall off there. I, I make some stupid mistakes throughout this run. I've said before, this is by no means perfect. There's a lot of improvements that could be made. But we destroy that. We activate this big, massive blast of energy. And we jump straight into it and ride it up. And this is going to be our first major boss fight against one of the major bosses of the game. It's very, very samey. Like, you, you beat the uh, boss by doing five waves of basically the same thing in the speedrun, at least. So I only show the first two waves and the very end of the last wave because otherwise we'd be watching for quite a while. Um, but we're making our way towards that. But first we've got to actually get there. And this is another level where we skip the vast majority. We first have to go through this little sort of jump puzzle area uh, that, that normally is quite simple. But we, we t tend to take a little bit more of an exaggerated route with this. Um, we jump over here. For some reason it triggers and then untriggers. So I have to jump back in. I jump over this way. We just bounce along. We I could have done an extra jump there to make that a little faster, but I didn't want to risk it. And then this, we actually skip the, the climb of a wall over to the next boost, over to the next boost, and then this platform, which is the hardest to reach monkey platform for me. As you see, I'll fail the jump, and I fail this jump all the time. I just always think that I have one more dash than I do, and I always fail it. But anyways, we make our way over, and then this is one of the hardest uh, slope boosts in the game for me at the moment. You have to get incredibly high. So what what I did actually is, you'll see me, this is going to be the first one of me failing it. Um, but what I did actually is I found a really small ledge about three quarters of the way up the wall that you can land on. It's like literally a pixel, but you can use that to jump off of. Uh, it's just right there where I was trying to jump to. But yeah, it's right on the edge and you can use that to jump off of and it makes the jump considerably easier. So just make your way towards this corner here. You go just on the pixel, pixel edge of it, and then you can bounce off of that to get a better jump. There I get a really terrible one. We need to go up insanely high for this one. So... I jump off. This is where having the 400 plus FPS uh, or over 250 really helps out because you can make these jumps a lot easier. You can get a lot higher on your slope boosts. But either way, we make our way over this and we're going to see a massive white plane that we're going to be walking across. I'm going to cut out most of the travel time on this white plane. There you go, because it's just me walking. And we make our way over and jump down towards this next big plane. Uh, now, there is a strategy where you ballista boost off the edge of this, but I really don't like that because you're jumping into the blind, you, into the abyss and you have to hope you land on the right point and it's a massive reset if you fail it so what i tend to do is jump onto this big big like black long triangle thing a uh, triangle rectangle thing um, and i go up to the front of it i bounce off and then just dash forward until i see a big purple bit of smoke 
when I start seeing the purple smoke, I jump towards that. Um, as you can see here, I was a little bit off and almost missed it, but luckily you can bounce directly on top. And here we actually make it all the way to the final cutscene of this level. And this is what I was talking about where we activate the fight. We drop down here, we go through the cutscene, and we are into our first major boss fight. Now, this boss fight is actually considerably easier than a lot of the other ones in the game, at least for the speedrun. Because you just fire at her with a ballista, it does an insane amount of damage, just keep repeating. And then the enemies that she spawns around the arena, the little, like, floating dresses with big golden heads if you shoot them in the head they drop loads of health and ammo so you just shoot those after every cycle and it makes it incredibly easy and this is the boss i was talking about in in the very start of the video while we why we needed to pick up the blood punch this boss cannot be done without the blood punch you have to use it but i'll skip over to the last phase now we shoot it two more times and there you go she is done after getting that final punch in and that's actually all of the levels apart from the last one now we are on to the very last level of the game this is probably the longest level in the game because for one i find the skips fairly difficult i i've not mastered this level at all this is probably my least practiced uh, level because up until like today actually of recording this there was a crash that happened on this final level where as soon as you started it it would crash your game and i was unfortunately getting that crash consistently so I got lucky that this run didn't crash, uh, but it was crashing very, very consistently. Uh, but either way, we make our way over and we use this wall to bounce up onto the Serenity sign that's next to us. Um, we don't make it on our first jump, but I do four or five more jumps and we'll skip over to the successful one here. And you'll be able to see a good jump here. Pretty good jump indeed. And there you go. We make our way up. And we got just basically got to walk over to this next building, jump off the next building onto the Virtus building. V virus? Vi is that virus? V virus. Virus. Jump onto the Virus building, make our way over. Then we go all the way to the other side of this building and we jump into a little arena that we end up going to later in the level if we'd have played it normally. Um, and then we can jump back out of that arena onto another roof then onto another roof and then we gotta do a pretty accurate ballista boost which i find very difficult to land right near the end of the level uh, so we jump onto this here we use this little vent here to jump up onto the roof that's next to us the moss building which we've seen before actually in the uh, first level um i don't know if it's the same building but it's the same company at least anyways so we use that and then we go over to this purple uh, sorry this pink banner building jump on top of that and then off of this building here, we use an invisible ledge and angle ourselves correctly to ballista boost into... You see where that big yellow thing is there in the distance? Right towards that. So we need to angle ourselves up correctly to get that. We need to jump off of this. You'll see me using the indicator at the bottom middle of the screen to when it goes gold to jump. And I get a pretty decent height jump, so I ballista boost. And again, I always try and jump just after the um the second boost and we land on this little section of road here which is right near the end of the level and we make our way through here again making your way through this is is just completely normal there's a small boost you can do to skip one of the wall climbs or one of the pipe jumps i think here i actually fail one of these pipe jumps which is hilarious um yeah i think it's this one <laughs> so there's just me failing really basic things here and then eventually i think what the hell why don't i just um do this the correct way and bounce myself over because i keep failing really basic things so i just bounce myself over rather than being stupid and doing it the regular way uh, we make our way over to this train cart here and i quickly pause the game just i can't remember why i did that in the video but i quickly pause the game and we make our way over and this right here is the start of the final fight you can tell that because there's uh, bfg ammo we drop here and the sin god whatever you want to call him is right in front of us the aspect of sin and basically the way this fight works is you have to shoot off his armor plating apparently for some reason i didn't understand that even though i fought this boss before and was just shooting at one of the plates i'd already got rid of it's very hard to hit this guy in the correct spot with a rocket launcher due to the travel time so i tend to use the ballista and the chain gun more uh, but this was a this was a very very long fight I decided to leave the entire fight in for this video just because it is like an interesting fight um and the tactics in it are, are definitely um interesting i tend to try to um move around the the course as much as possible so i can hit different sections but that really did lead to some some issues with hitting the right sections and 
The, con the, the considerably annoying thing with this fight is the sections include his hands and his abdomen, which are really hard to hit because of the angles that he has them at. We actually use our sword here to destroy a few of the basic enemies. When I did this on Ultra Violence, I had to really, really keep on top of those enemies and use our sword a considerable amount to take them out because you cannot leave them. Luckily, on this difficulty, I could pretty much leave them and ignore them. As you can see here, we destroyed the face. He looks like some sort of strange cat. I, I, I do think this guy looks like a very odd-looking demon. But as you can see, we're hitting him a lot and not really dealing much damage here. But we get off another one of the chest pieces there. And I use the chain gun here. See, one thing we might be looking at doing is upgrading either the chain gun or upgrading the rocket launcher to make this fight faster. Because... Honestly, this fight isn't very quick and it could definitely be sped up. The BFG is obviously one way of getting it a bit faster, but it's still hard to hit with the BFG because of how slow it travels and how he moves. It's very likely, especially on the chest, that you'd hit the same segment twice. But we just got to take out the arm, abdomen, and both of the... Uh, sorry, the, the hands, the arm, and both the abdomen... I don't know what I'm saying, but you know what I mean. Take out the remaining segments, which aren't actually that bad. It's just it's just the hands. We need to find some zombies to get rid of. Unfortunately, using the sword does not give you any ammo, so unfortunately, we can't do anything with that. We do get a few extra shots on there. And once we've done this phase, we've got to actually destroy his body because he, he, he realizes his armor has been destroyed. He gets perturbed by that, apparently, and tries to run away, but we follow him through a portal and chase him down. See, here's me just trying to find zombies to execute because I can't find any. There's one. Getting ammo back in this fight is, is very difficult because there's not actually that much ammo lying about. You've just got to chainsaw everything pretty much. Um, and when we're only getting 100 for a ballista, that's only four shots. Four shots doesn't really cut it. But luckily, we can take out one of the hands there and we're very, very, very close to finishing this guy off and I, I really just couldn't work out what was going on with the armor plating in this last section because it looked like everything was gone but it I, I couldn't destroy it and eventually I, I got it but the second phase very much the same as the first one but it's a lot harder because you're in a tighter arena you've got a lot more enemies spawning in he's got some new attacks which are very very difficult on the harder difficulties but luckily we um on the easier difficulties you don't have to worry about those attacks dealing too much damage so we jump up here into the portal to follow him and we end up on this roof here now this is a bit where we can use a bit more bfg ammo because there's i believe four lots of bfg ammo scattered around this uh area and you can use those to get some pretty easy uh, hits on his segments and I believe if you hit a direct hit with a BFG it fully destroys a segment uh, So as you saw there we did about a tenth maybe even more than a tenth damage And then we hit his head again and destroyed it Unfortunately, I hit his head twice in a row with a BFG there and even that hit he dodged the BFG So that considerably slowed down my uh, my fight here and made this take a lot longer I really had some issues destroying this guy because his segments, unlike the armoured segment, uh, the armoured uh, section of this fight, it's very difficult to tell whether it's been destroyed or not because there's like two phases to the destruction. As you can see there, like some of his arm skin fell off and then the meat actually falls off and it's really, really hard to tell when you've got that correct or not. But I do think with practice I can get this fight down to where it's a lot quicker. Uh, we actually end up destroying a little bit of chest there. But as you can see by the damage at the top, we didn't actually deal any damage. We just he helped to destroy the sec section that we'd already destroyed. So that that is rather frustrating. And that was, that was the main slowdown on this fight. And th this is why you can see the timer ticking up and ticking up and ticking up and taking so goddamn long to do this fight. When I get right towards the last few percent, like the last 10% of his HP, I was just firing randomly at his body parts and trying to figure out what the hell was going on because I just, I couldn't find the part of the body that I hadn't already hit. Um, and even at half health here, you can see that I'm, I'm really struggling. And the RPG is just not helping. I think maybe when we get the lock-on missile, it'll make it much better. But I'm, I'm really unsure as to what's going to be the best method for that. But I think I'm going to try and do another run later on today and improve this. As I said, this was literally my first full run. Uh, I'd practiced all the segments separately, but uh, this was my first time trying to piece it all together. And as I said, this run is by no means perfect. But now I believe it's just the hands that are left and one of the chest pieces, which I, I couldn't for the life of me hit. As you can see, I've got a red marker on it there. Uh, the red flashes are what indicate whether it's broken or not. 
Uh, but I think it's just the hands we've got to go now. But they were really, really hard to hit. Really hard to hit. Because he moves them so much in this phase of the fight. And if you if you hit any other section, it deals absolutely no damage. So I, I found that really difficult. I accidentally used the super powerful sword on a very basic enemy there. And one thing that, that very nearly happened during this fight is I, I, I actually very nearly died. Uh, like, if you, I think it's in a moment. I get hit by one of his attacks and get put down to about 20 HP. And that honestly scared the life out of me because if i'd have died on this fight it would have wasted like another maybe 10 minutes especially with the way i've been doing it, the fight so far so we take out that chest piece which as i said looked already destroyed and i really found it difficult to find the right spot here i just could not hit him in the right spot but there you go We're down to 45 hp here and i was kind of kind of a bit scared but we swipe this guy Get a nice heal. The bigger enemies give you pretty much a full heal. But now we're having to fire a rocket launcher at him. And we, I couldn't find any basic zombies to get ammo off of by chainsawing. So I had to wait around to get near to any enemies to use my ballista. Because that was my favourite weapon for uh, destroying his segments here. And as you can see, I'm shooting right at the segment that's meant to be not destroyed. And dealing absolutely no damage. And this was a big cry moment for me. I was really panicking that I wasn't going to be able to do it. Because I wasn't focusing on my timer at all. There was no specific time I was aiming for. It's not like I was aiming to beat, um, beat the game in under an hour and a half. It just so happened that I managed it by about 30 seconds. Uh, but yeah, I was I was panicking so much. And then this bit. Ooh, 34 HP. Ooh, I was scared. Ooh, boy. Because I was just... All, all I'm doing now is just running around. And I couldn't, I couldn't get that last segment. Because I think we've got one more on his shoulder. Then we've got another one, as you can see. And I just... At this point, he's got so little health. I'm like, where... where what's going on? But there you go. He went down 1 hour, 29 minutes, and 28 seconds. Doom Eternal has been beaten. It has been beaten faster by other people, and it will be beaten much faster in the future. I'm sure I'll be able to get a better run than this. But I thought this would be a really, really good video to just show off something cool that I did and also get some new people into the Doom Eternal speedrunning community. Uh, this was really fun to make, really fun to route and find new strategies, and all the guys that have been finding all of these awesome strategies are amazing. I'll leave links to some resources if you want to get involved in the description and the Discord, and I will see you guys in the next one.